You can find half of this story in the records of the New York City Police Department and the other half in the records of a newspaper office. Mr. Norcross, the New York millionaire, was murdered by a burglar in his apartment. Two weeks later, the murderer met Detective Barney Woods on Broadway. Is that you, Johnny Kernan? asked Woods. Yes, it is, said Kernan happily. And you're Barney Woods of St. Joe. What are you doing in the East? I now live in New York City. I'm a detective for the New York Police Department. Well, 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 said Kernan, smiling happily. Come into Muller's Cafe, said Woods, and let's find a quiet table. I want to talk to you, Kernan. It was almost four o'clock in the afternoon, and there weren't many people in the cafe. They found a quiet table, and Kernan sat down in front of the detective. Kernan was well dressed and self confident. Woods was short, pale, and wore a cheap suit. What are you doing now? asked Woods. You left St. Joe a year before me. I'm in the gold mining business, said Kernan. Perhaps I'll open an office here. Well, well, so old Barney is a New York detective. You were in the police in St. Joe after I left, weren't you? Yes, I was there for six months, said Woods. And now there's one more question, Johnny. In your other burglaries, you never used a gun. Why did you kill Norcross? Kernan looked at his drink for a few moments. Then he looked at the detective with a big smile. How did you discover this, Barney? He asked with admiration. I thought I did a perfect job, didn't I? Woods put a very small gold pencil on the table. It was a little watch charm. This is the little charm I gave you when we were in St. Joe. I found it under the table in Norcross's room. Be careful of what you say, Johnny. We were friends once, but now I'm a detective, and I must do my duty. In the state of New York, murderers get the electric chair. Kernan laughed. I'm lucky, Woods, Kernan said. He put one hand inside his coat. Woods immediately put his hand on his gun. Put it away, said Kernan. And I'll tell you why I shot Norcross. The foolish old man came towards me with a gun and started shooting. The old lady was very nice. She just stayed in bed and watched everything. I took her $12,000 diamond necklace and she said nothing. I think she married old Norcross for his money. There were six rings, two pendants, and an expensive watch. Everything was worth about $15,000. Don't tell me all this, said Woods. Oh, it's all right, said Kernan. Everything is in my suitcase at the hotel. And now I'll tell you why I'm talking. Because it's safe. I'm talking to a man I know. You owe me a thousand dollars, Barney Woods. You won't arrest me. I remember, said Woods. You gave me one thousand dollars. One day I'll pay back the money. The thousand dollars saved me. They were putting my furniture out on the street when I got home that night. You're a good, honest man, continued Kernan, and you can't arrest me because you owe me money. The waiter came and brought them some drinks. Woods looked at the little gold pencil and said, I can't arrest you. I didn't pay back the thousand dollars. It's a bad situation for me. But you helped me once, Johnny. And now I must do the same. I knew it, said Kernan, smiling. I can judge men, Woods. I'm silent only because I owe you money. Otherwise, you couldn't escape, said Woods. I know I couldn't, said Kernan. That's why I knew I was safe with you. You see, Kernan, I'm a man first, and then a detective. And now I'll let you go, and I'll leave the New York City police. I'll probably go and drive a truck. I'll never be able to pay back the thousand dollars. Oh, you can keep it, said Kernan. But I know you want to pay it back one day. I was lucky that you borrowed it. But let's change the subject. Tomorrow, I'm going to the West on the train. I know a place where I can sell the jewels. Have another drink, Barney, and forget your problems. Let's have fun tonight. I'm in the hands of my old friend, Barney Woods. All evening, Kernan told Woods many stories about his successful wrongdoings and clever criminal plans. 
Woods became very irritated by this vicious man. Be very careful, Kernan. The newspapers could write about the Norcross case again, because there were a lot of burglaries and murders in New York this summer. Kernan suddenly became angry. I don't care about the newspapers. What can the newspapers do? They can send reporters and photographers to the scene of the crime. They can write about it, but they can't catch the burglar. Well, I don't know, said Woods slowly. Some newspapers do very good work. There's the Morning Mars, for example. They helped to catch a criminal when the police forgot about him. I'll show you, said Kernan, getting up confidently. I'll show you what I think in newspapers in general, and the Morning Mars in particular. There was a telephone booth near their table. Kernan went inside the booth and left the door open. He found a number in the telephone book and phoned. Woods sat quietly and looked at Kernan's cold and arrogant face. He listened carefully. Hello, the morning, Mars? I want to speak to the editor. He waited a few moments with his vicious little smile. Are you the editor? I'm the man who killed old Norcross. Wait, this is not the usual crank call. I killed the old man at 2.30 a.m. two weeks ago. What? You don't believe me? You don't understand. I'm giving you the biggest scoop in the history of your boring little newspaper. What? Really? Well, you can't expect me to give you my name and address, can you? No, this is not a rival newspaper. I killed old Norcross, and I have the jewels in a suitcase. Well, I'm not going to tell you the name of the hotel. Now listen, half of the second button on Mrs. Norcross's nightgown is broken. I saw it when I took the ring off her finger. Kernan looked at Woods and said, uh, He believes me now. Then he started talking on the phone again. Hello? Yes, I'm here. What? You want to catch me in 48 hours? Stop being foolish. Just continue writing your stories about divorces, accidents, and the dirty scandals you write about. Kernan hung up the phone and said, He's really furious now. Well, Barney, let's go and enjoy ourselves tonight. We can have dinner and see a musical comedy. I only need four hours sleep, and then I'm going west. Kernan and Woods had dinner in a Broadway restaurant and went to see a musical comedy. Kernan spent a lot of money. At half past three in the morning, they went to an all-night cafe. Kernan continued talking in his fast, arrogant manner. Woods listened and thought sadly about the end of his career as a detective. But suddenly, his eyes became bright. I wonder if it's possible, he thought. I wonder if it's possible. Outside, it was early morning. The big city was waking up. Woods could hear the first noises of the day. One of the noises was the cries of the newspaper boys with the latest news, the clarion call. Woods gave ten cents to a waiter and said, Buy me a morning Mars, please. When he got the paper, he looked at the first page. Then he took a page out of his notebook and began writing with a little gold pencil. What's the news? asked Kernan. Woods showed him the piece of paper. Please pay to John Kernan the thousand-dollar reward that is mine for his arrest. Barnard Woods. You tease them so much on the phone, and they put you on the first page of the morning Mars. Now, Johnny, you'll come to the police station with me.